fat soluble vitamins synthetic versus natural fat soluble vitamins synthetic versus natural and I know what you're all thinking right off the bat natural is always going to be better but am, am I wrong or am I right <laughs> well, it depends on which nutrients we're talking about. If okay. we're going to talk about fat-soluble vitamins, uh, natural is the only way to go. Okay, so some vitamins are called water-soluble and some are called fat-soluble. What's the difference? Okay. Uh, there are The fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. And what we mean by that is that they are stored in the liver and other soft tissues. Okay. So when the body has the ability to build up storehouses of these nutrients for future use. Yeah. Water soluble nutrients, which include the B complex and vitamin C are unable to be stored by the body for any length of time. Like B. Like all the B complex, vitamin C. These are water soluble. They're going to pass out of the body uh, through urine excretion very relatively rapidly, which is why water soluble nutrients should be taken on a daily basis. And C, vitamin C is water soluble Yes, too. it is, along with the B complex. Okay. But when we talk about fat soluble vitamins, the body has an ability to store a certain amount of them uh, for a certain length of time. And save them, save it for when it's needed. Yes. Huh. So if, if, if that's the case, the mini, the the many supplement companies that use synthetic fat soluble vitamins because it's a cheaper way um is there any problem with that can be um because the body can store these things uh synthetic versions depending on how much are taken can rise to potentially toxic levels Mm. because the body first of all stores it second of all it has a uh takes a longer time to process the synthetic versions oh I see. when you take a natural fat soluble vitamin the body knows what to do with it because it's called you know internal wisdom it, it's something that we are a part of nature it is something that the body was designed to be able to do and when you start synthesizing, or not, not synthesizing, that's another category altogether, but uh, when you start creating synthetic versions of something that's going to potentially remain in the body for any length of time, oh, I uh, see. Yeah. then we begin to get concerned about toxic buildup. In fact, vitamin A, which is one of my favorite vitamins, and... Uh, one quick example, but we might want to talk about this in detail later. But um, I've often used vitamin A because it protects the mucosal membranes or linings of the body. Yeah. So that's the sinuses, the ears, nose, and throat, the genitourinary region, any place where the internal and external environment might, might co-mingle. And when you take adequate vitamin A, it prevents uh, those uh, tissues from becoming infected. Hmm. So like when you get a sinus cold and it, if, you, if you're not healthy and your immune system is not up to par, you can develop a sinus, post-secondary sinus infection. Well, vitamin A prevents that from occurring hmm. and you need to use it oftentimes in very high amounts, which I have done and done so very successfully. But if you use a synthetic version of vitamin A and you go, try to go up to those elevated levels, you risk toxicity. Yeah. In fact, uh, there was one study that looked at vitamin A toxicity from supplementation. And there were 11 people hospitalized during this particular period of time with vitamin A toxicity. And it, they were all on synthetic. Every single one of them was on an artificial synthetic vitamin A. None of them were taking natural vitamin A. We should definitely make a video just about that study. Oh, I think so. Because I think it, it, it points out the, the potential pitfalls 
uh, not only of vitamin A, but D and E and, and, and you know, the fat soluble nutrients and to, to a lesser extent, even the water soluble ones. So how can we find out when we buy a supplement at the store or a, a, a supplement company on a website? How do we know if it's natural or synthetic? If you look at the label, it should say the source. Okay. <clears throat> For example, uh, A and D would be from fish liver oil extract. Oh, okay. Or vitamin A acetate would be uh, uh, okay. So um, it should say on the label. Well, what if they're? But they use the word synthetic. No, they won't use synthetic. But uh, they will use something you can't pronounce, and that's oh, like, okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's like pretty much the, word or something. The dead giveaway, you okay. know. What are uh, some benefits of natural fat soluble vitamins? Well, uh, they are absolutely essential for immunity. Uh, as we've mentioned with vitamin A, it, it is a protective factor for mucosal tissue. Vitamin D is essential for your immune system. I remember during the pandemic, everybody was told to go out and get 10 minutes of sun a day. Why? Because vitamin D is made, manufactured in the body on your skin tissue when it comes in contact with sunlight. Oh, I thought the sun was vitamin D. Vitamin D, right. And A. Uh, no, vitamin D for, for, for the sun. Vitamin A has to be either ingested from diet, uh, which is hard to get adequate amounts because vitamin A usually is found in things that people don't eat a lot of, like seafood. Mm. Uh, you, there's some vitamin A in, in, in animal proteins, uh, but it, it's, it's hard to get adequate amounts depending upon your own individual needs. Got it, got it. 